Greetings, YouTubers. I'm Rick, the tech enthusiast here for the next Elegoo lesson number 12, DHT11, Temperature and Humidity Sensor. In this lesson, we'll become familiar with the DHT11 Temperature and Humidity Sensor provided with the Elegoo kit. We'll build and configure a simple circuit that is provided in the tutorial to demonstrate the functionality using the Arduino library. So let's start building. The DHT11 that is included in the kit is already mounted on a little breakout board with the proper pull-up resistor. We only need to add VCC, something between 3.3 volts to 5 volts. Add a ground and connect the data pin to an available digital input on the Arduino. To keep things simple, an Arduino library is used to determine the temperature and humidity. What's important to note is that it's relatively accurate, even though the response time is slow, but it should work for most of our projects. The tutorial and the data sheet have some additional information on the DHT11 sensor, and I encourage you to check it out. For this lesson, we'll need the following items from your kit. The Elegoo Arduino Uno R3 board the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor, three female to male jumper wires. That's it. On page 93, you'll see the following schematic. A jumper will be connected between the data pin and pin two. And then there's just power and ground. Simple. On page 94, you'll see the wiring diagram with a photo on page 96. Note, we're not going to use a breadboard this time. Okay, let's jump to the code. As before, we'll load the recommended sketch provided in the tutorial. Go to the file menu item, open, and browse to where you save the Elegoo files. Then under your language, code, under lesson 12, DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor, DHT11, and open the dht11.ino file. Looking at the code, you'll see that we'll be using the simple dht.h library. Again, this was installed with my latest Arduino IDE. My version is 1.8.5. Otherwise, it's available under the Elgu tutorial files. To verify, go to the sketch menu item. Select include library, you should see, or you should be able to see, if you have the simple DHT already installed. If you need to add it, select the Add Zip Library. Go to where you saved your Elegoo files. Under your language, under Libraries, and you should see the simple DHT.zip. Select it and click the Open button. I have it. So I'll hit cancel for now. Once you have it installed, you may need to restart your Arduino IDE. Okay, the sketch continues with setting an integer variable pin DHT11 to pin two. Then it instantiates the DHT11 object as a simple DHT11 object class. When I first read this, I thought, what, why, why did they change the class name like that? You know, have the library as uh, simple DHT and then the class is simple DHT11. But of course, you if you go back and you read the library, the library supports DHT11 and the DHT22 sensors. Again, it's always good to take a look at the library. The void setup starts up the serial monitor. Simple. The void loop starts with a couple of lines to the serial monitor. Then it creates two local byte variables, temperature and humidity, and a 40 byte array data. Then it sets all of them to zero. If we take a look at the library, the simple DHT has a read method requiring these parameters, temperature, humidity, the pin, and a 40 bit data array. If it fails, it returns an integer value of an error message. Otherwise, it returns a zero. This brings us to the next line. First, 
Let's talk about the ampersands. This passes the address of the variable rather than just the values. We only want to do this if we want the function, or in this case, the method, to modify the variables themselves. Now the if statement runs the read method. If the return value is anything other than zero, it displays an error message. Otherwise, the read method alters the values stored by the variables temperature, humidity, and the array data. The next few lines send the raw data to the serial monitor and displays the temperature and humidity. There's a small delay at the end and then it repeats. Let's upload the code and try it out. So here's the circuit laid out. Here's the Elegoo Arduino Uno R3 port. I connected the positive and the ground to the female to male plugs that go right into the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. The data pin is a brown wire that hooks up to pin number two. I just use this little piece of tape to kind of keep things from moving around on me. Okay, let's upload the code and check it out. I start by opening up the serial monitor. And as you can see, it quickly displays the data, the temperature and the humidity. If I grab the DHT11 sensor, you can see the temperature slowly increases, but the humidity increases quite fast. It looks like it's the humidity part of the sensor has a much faster response time than the temperature. If I let it go, it will quickly start to drop down, but the temperature slowly changes. If I grab it again, you can see that the humidity and the temperature increases. And if I let go, the humidity de quickly decreases and the temperature very slowly decreases. Okay, the only other improvement I can think of is perhaps if it had the decimal values in it. The library has another method, read2, that can return a float values for the temperature and humidity. Behind the scenes, the library handles switching the assigned pin as a digital output and then to an input, triggering various pulses to get the reading. The time pulses are different for both the DHT11 and the DHT12. Looking at the data sheet, you can see that the data holds much more information. The first two sets of eight bits of data holds the humidity value above and below the decimal point. The next two sets of eight bits of data hold the temperature values above and below the decimal point. The last eight bits is a parity check. If you are able to add all the individual values, 
treating the values below the decimal point as integers, the sum will be the parity check value. The remainder of the data sheet goes into various timing of signals to represent the 40 data bits of ones and zeros. So I guess the code is storing one bit of data in an array of bytes. Interesting. Fixing the library and the code to hold 10 bytes of data is really beyond the scope of this lesson. However, I like to modify the code to include the decimal values of temperature and humidity. So here's the changes. It's actually super simple. Start by changing the byte temperature and humidity to floats, and then set them to equal 0.0. .0. Now this is important because the adding the decimal point forces the Arduino IDE to treat it as a float. Otherwise it may treat it as a long or an integer. Then change the line of if parentheses dht11.read to if parentheses dht11.read2. The data output to the serial monitor can remain the same. Next, delete the parentheses int close parentheses from the serial print command. And that what that did before was it converted the value to an integer. And we don't need to do that now. We want to keep it as a float. That's it. Let's upload the code and test it. All right, we're running the code. We'll open up the serial monitor and see the difference. You can see the data output, the temperature, and the humidity. And there is a decimal place there. However, there's no values in there. If you look at the data, there still is no values there. How weird. I was pretty sure this would work uh, with the setting. Huh. I'll have to look at the library and take a little closer look. Oh, with a little searching, I found the answer. It's not the library. It's the DHT11 sensor. The DHT11 sensor doesn't provide anything below the decimal or negative values. For this, we'd have to use the DHT21 or the DHT22 sensors. I can definitely see adding a display or an LCD screen would make things easier. Adding a barometric module could make a simple weather station. Perhaps we'll do this in a future video. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little about the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor and the simple DHT.h library. If you like this sketch, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. I'll have additional links for other interesting videos and the code for this project in the show notes below. Join me next time for lesson 13, analog joystick module. If you like this video, don't forget to rate and subscribe. I'll try to put out a new video each week. Thanks and see you next time.